This is the GIS News Hour for Thursday, 3rd February. I am Leslie Ann Johnson. In the headlines, Grenada and UK renew terms and conditions of air services agreement, significant increase in all types of cancer recorded, and Upper House passes a passport amendment bill. Those were the headlines. Details are next. Hey man, hey man, mm. you talking in your sleep, man? Uh, talking? Yeah. <laughs> Why, well, I was having one nice dream about the Grenada Sailing Festival, this is how we got regatta. Yeah, boy, and the time drawing here, you know. You know this year is February 5th and 6th, right here on Granite Beach? You mean Independence Weekend? Yeah, man. All them team excited, and everybody say they're taking on the championship. You mean Guav, Woban, Sotez, that? The Pity, man, yeah. Carrop, <laughs> all of them. Yeah, man, that weekend will be a weekend of food, music, and loads of excitement. So I could dress him in national colors then? <laughs> yeah man, and I will encourage everybody, they at least wear one part of the national color. Yeah no man, I go back and sleep. I go not pick up my clothes for the digital work boat we got boy. Hey, don't forget, Grenada Sailing Festival, digital work boat we got February 5th and 6th. Pure sales, pure spice. You stealing me dream? I just pass it. Come out in your numbers, cause this one's gonna be big, big! It's the National Independence Calypso Finals. This Saturday, February 5th, at the Ceteris Bus Terminal, Low Town Ceteris. 20 Calypsonians will attempt to dethrone the reigning independence Calypso monarch, Anthony Darius. Young Sundown, starting time, 7pm. And all this for free. So get there early. Guest appearance by the Calypso King, Pico, and Extempo shout out by Powder and Bernstein. It's the National Independence Calypso Finals this Saturday at the Satez Bus Terminal. This event will be backed by the Heatwave Band and part sponsored by the Marketing National and Importing Board. Welcome back. Grenada and the UK have renewed the terms and conditions of the air services agreement between the two states. The agreement, signed on behalf of Grenada by Minister for Tourism and Civil Aviation Peter David and British High Commissioner Paul Brummel, replaces the first agreement negotiated in 2007. High Commissioner Brummel says it's an honor to sign the agreement with the Minister for Tourism. He defined it as an excellent example of bilateral relations in the civil aviation sector between Grenada and the UK. Um, I think the agreement co codifies what is an excellent relationship, an excellent bilateral relationship in the civil aviation sector. Uh, Grenada is a very important tourism market for the United Kingdom um, and I'm delighted that many British visitors don't just come each year but we have a huge number of, of repeat visitors each year who are, are really in chanted by the warmth of the, the Grenadian welcome um, by your sandy beaches and the beauty of the of the scenery uh, and abo above all I think the warmth of the people um, they're brought here by a range of carriers including um, scheduled flights from from Virgin Atlantic and British Airways and I think um, I, I'd recognize that over the past few years in the times of economic downturn globally um, there have been some quite difficult years I know that tourism arrivals from the UK was was down um, f following the, the 2008 particularly in 2009 but I think looking forward um, the prospects are are looking brighter I think um, both BA and Virgin are strongly committed to uh, the Caribbean region as a whole, including Grenada, um, and have plans including a sort of modest increase in, in scheduled services to the, to the Caribbean region. 
Um, so I think um, the bilateral tourism relationship will continue and I think will continue to, to grow. Um, and I should comment too that the UK um, is partnering Grenada in a range of, of other sectors. Um, I'd highlight, for example, UK involvement in the uh, development of the uh, Port Louis Marina, um, which I think is really uh, already and uh, established as, as one of the kind of premier marinas in the in the region and, and set to set to develop further. So I really look forward to the further development of our um, tourism relationship. Virgin Atlantic, Monarch Airlines and British Airways are among a number of flights originating out of the UK. Tourism Minister Peter David says the agreement is critical not only in terms of its importance to U the UK market but also for Grenadians within the diaspora. The relationship between Grenada and the United Kingdom is one that spans many, many, many years. Uh, in fact, we always refer to you as one of our good traditional friends that uh, despite all of the new relationships we've developed in recent years because of course the world has changed that we continue to deepen and expand the relationship we have with the United Kingdom and certainly as Minister for Tourism I say that your uh, market is, is one of the most important for us uh, the UK market serviced by British Airways, Virgin Atlantic and Monarch play a critical role in our tourism industry and of course I need not repeat here this morning the importance of tourism to our economy. It's uh, the most important sector in our national economy. So certainly relationship between ourselves uh, is, is extremely important not just us as governments but to certainly the people of this country. And while we recognize that flow from the United Kingdom to Grenada, our people visiting London is also extremely important uh, for that relationship. Many, many Grenadians live in London. I myself lived in London for five years, and I know that uh, every time there's a flight, there's not only many visitors, but there are many uh, Grenadians who live in the British diaspora visiting our shores, and they uh, an extremely important part, not only simply uh, of our diaspora, but of our, our, our tourism uh, 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 product, because we have looked at our diaspora in the last couple of years, and we've decided to take initiatives in that regard, encouraging them to come back. And this agreement that we're about to sign certainly will, uh, is part of the enhancing of, of that uh, diaspora tourism. Official statistics from the oncology department have revealed a significant increase in all types of cancer. Ms. Eunice Batiste, a registered nurse at the department, says in late 2007 to early 2008 there were at least 21 breast cancer patients, but today there are as many as 69. In the colon, colorectal, rectal, we had like five, we have 17 today. And these are persons that we see and treat. It could have been there are lots more that might, might have seen doctor and they have they just reclined, declined treatment or that have traveled mm -hmm. and you know. We have seen a rise in the lymphomas. We had eight patients in 2007, 2008. We had 30 today. Mm -hmm. That's 100%, 100 plus percent. Percent mm -hmm. increase. Mm -hmm. The prostate, we have 17 today, there were like 12 or less, 2007, 2008, and 2009, we had 12, today we have 17. And the, the bladder, not too bad, one, two, liver, one, two, one or two, pancreatic, one or two. But these are the main ones that we have, and the, the, the gynecological ones, we had 10. In 2010, we have 15 today. Dr. Crystal Antoine Frank, the department's house officer, says lifestyle and environmental factors are a major part of the problem. We are what we eat. Whatever you put into your system, that's what your system has to feed on. And a lot of these highly processed foods and so, they are very significant contributors to cancer. Foods rich in fats. Sometimes if you eat too much protein in one week, that can predispose you to developing cancer as well. 
you know and um to environment also has a, a big role to play um for instance the the ra excessive radiation exposure via the cell phones and you know the computers and the remote controls and the microwave ovens and all of that all these also you know contributing that's right yeah Ms. Batiste, who is also a cancer survivor, says the disease does not have to be a death sentence. She says people simply need to do what is necessary to prolong their life once they have been positively diagnosed. Cancer is so limited, it cannot cripple love. It cannot shatter hope. It cannot corrode faith. It cannot destroy peace. It cannot kill friendship. It cannot suppress memories. It cannot silence courage. It cannot invade the soul. It cannot conquer the spirit. It cannot steal eternal life. Therefore, let us all find CAN, capital C-A-N, in cancer. Friday, February 4, will be observed as World Cancer Day. The Upper House has passed the Passport Amendment Bill, which seeks to reduce the validity of passports from 10 to 5 years. It was piloted by Senator Ali Gill, who explained that the move was primarily for security reasons and was intended to give immigration authorities greater control over the document. He says passports already issued will remain valid, but thereafter, whatever is issued will have a 5-year lifespan. Private sector representative Senator Chris Diali queried about the cost implications as a result of the impending change. He says a higher volume of passports could now need to be will now need to be produced because of the time decrease. Opposition Senator Anthony Boson said he does not think the move to reduce the validity time is consistent with what is taking place in the world today. By using biometrics to really trace and to monitor persons. Um, these things do not really change overnight in five years. And therefore, in addition to the administrative cost associated with regular issuing, issuance of passports, I'm wondering what is the um, real relevance. And moving towards the CARICOM passport is going to be inconsistent with that move and moving to five years. Yeah? And the point I was making earlier, um, if it is for existing passports, Based on the explanation you give in terms of persons with Grenadian passport, that won't solve the problem. You know, so really we need to get those clarifications. It wouldn't solve the problem if you want to track people who already have passports in five years. If it's for ten years and they have it now in their possession. But Senator Gill is not convinced that there will be an additional burden on the capacity of security personnel. In respect of costs. Um I, can, I, I cannot say for certain whether or not it will increase or decrease the administrative cost. But we, we know that passports have to be paid for. And I believe that there is already a, a, a well-oiled um, administrative machinery for the issuing of passports. Um, if anything, I believe it may, it, it may generate revenue rather than um, be an additional burden on the capacity of the immigration department that issues the passports. So I, I really think that um, and, uh, the, with regards to the issue of cost, um, I, I believe that that obviously might have been factored in. Health Minister Senator Ann Peters believes this is a wise decision because of the biological changes that people undergo. Two additional bits of legislation are expected to be piloted before the House of Representatives during the first quarter of this year as part of the OECS reform project. These are the Child Justice and the Status of the Child Bills. UNICEF consultant for the project, Mrs. Jacqueline Seeley Burke, says they are part of a larger package to enhance the lives of children. She says the Child Justice Bill will also make provisions for young people who run afoul of the law. As it stands now, if a young person commits a crime, he's dealt with under the criminal code, which is the same legislation applied to adults. This legislation is really geared at making sure that that particular set of children, those who come into conflict with the law, um, will be dealt with more fairly and more appropriately. The status of children bill, Grenada already had a status of children um, act. But this act simply enhances um, on the existing legislation and it's really designed to ensure that we no longer have any distinction 
between children who were born out of wedlock versus those who are born within wedlock. So the whole notion of the illegitimate child and all of the disparities that used to exist in relation to that child um, will, under the status of Children Act, those would be removed. That was the case with the existing status of Children Act, but this particular piece of legislation has some additional provisions that speak to some um, you know, technological advancements that we've made around DNA testing, um, whereas you know, under the old legislation we were talked about blood tests, now we have DNA testing. Um, and so this particular act is not new. It just slightly builds on what we had before. The Child Justice Bill would also ensure there are appropriate programs in place to deal with young people. One of these is a 10-week psychosocial program at Legal Aid that provides support for young men and boys who come into conflict with the law. Mrs. Seelyberg hopes they will benefit from the intervention, which could result in positive behavioral change. It is delivered by two male facilitators at present. That is probably going to evolve to a male and a female facilitator. Um, and it's really designed to ensure that they learn not only some basic life skills, you know, like, um, you know, issues around hygiene, issues around communication, issues around conflict resolution, but that they are afforded an opportunity as well to share about their experiences. Because a lot of these young men um, think that what's happening to them is unique that they are coming from a home environment where there's a lot of violence or that they um, alone have not had the opportunity to, um, you know, to really get to know their father, for example. But when they come together in this kind of a setting, they also learn that a lot of their life experience is shared mm -hmm. with other persons and um, you see a bonding happening between these young men which is good because we've also socialized our young men into thinking that bonding is not good that's not appropriate for for guys that you somehow hold on to all of your baggage you know you don't vent you don't openly discuss things, you bear them, um, whereas this forum gives them the opportunity to really vent, to openly, um, perhaps for the first time, discuss how they are feeling, because boys don't talk about how they're feeling. They talk about things, but they never or rarely talk about how they're feeling. She says a similar program is being designed for young women who also find themselves in trouble with the law. Discussions for future expansion are underway between officials from the Legal Aid and Counseling Clinic and the Ministry of Social Development. One of the items on the table for consideration is creating a program, a similar program for the girls and young women. The other um, way in which we're seeking to expand the program is to not only include young persons who are already before the court, but young persons who have been identified as vulnerable or at risk of committing criminal acts, either by their principals at their schools or by police officers who have not yet charged them could perhaps charge him, but have said, listen, attend this program. And so it's going to become a diversion program that's broader in its, um, in its outlook and will take um, referrals from a number of sources, not just from the court. We're also hoping that it will become a preventative tool so that those young people who are borderline juveniles who would could commit crime, um, that this might prevent them from taking that last step into criminal behavior. You're watching the GIS News Hour. We'll be right back. Yes. 
a burst of culture as Grenada's heritage hits center stage at the Cultural Fiesta. This Sunday, February 6th, at the Grenville Car Park in St. Andrew. Enjoy a wide variety of tasty Grenadian cuisine, arts and craft exhibition, and a spectacular concert featuring the Black Wizard, Man from the Mainland, 2010, Groovy Soka Monarch, Rankin Marvin, the traditional shortening, the Maple Dance, and much more. The Cultural Village opens its gates from 5.30 p.m., followed by the Flambeau Parade through the town of Grenville at 7.30 p.m. and an impressive fireworks display at 12 midnight. The Independence Cultural Fiesta, February 6th from 5.30 p.m. at the Grenville Car Park. The grand climax of the Independence Celebration takes place on Monday, February 7th with the National Independence Day Celebration Pageant displaying Grenada's heritage and culture from the Green Bridge into the National Stadium from 1.30 p.m. followed by the traditional military parade and rally at the National Stadium from 2.45 p.m. It's the grand finale of Grenada's 37th Independence Anniversary, February 7th, at the National Stadium. Come on out in your national colors and be a part of this celebration. Continuing the news, Prime Minister, the Honorable Tillman Thomas has given his government's firm commitment to caring for the sick in the best possible manner. He was addressing students at the Boca Secondary and Anglican High School on Thursday. One student at Boca questioned about the quality of health care in Grenada and asked whether people had to travel for treatment for health care problems for health problems like cancer, kidney and heart disease. Prime Minister Thomas said, although there are some flaws in the system, government will continue to do its best to care for the sick. As part of our developmental strategy to put health and wellness as one of the pillars and to partner with the St. George's Medical School to improve our health system. Because of what we are a small population and the the, the, the cost sometimes is somewhat prohibitive in within the OECS as a matter of fact. This is why we have been, for instance, in terms of uh, cancer, we have a link with uh, the United States. There's a doctor, a Grenadian doctor, who operates, Dr. Lin, uh, he as an oncologist, and we arrange for patients to go to the United States to get treatment. We arrange to go to, to Cuba. This is a feature of the entire OECS uh, countries because of the, the, the cost factor to maintain these things, but we are doing our utmost to see how we could improve it. Another student sought answers on government's plans to create employment opportunities for students who are leaving school. Prime Minister Thomas says training is important, hence government's decision to invest in a number of educational programs. The Grenada Youth Upliftment Program, a program that provides training for young people in different areas and this year, that program has been extended. There's substantial more monies to provide uh, support for that program. Those who want to get involved in hospitality arts and uh, electronics, in, in agribusiness, there, if you apply to the Ministry of Youth Empowerment, there are several areas of, for studies or, or for technical training. Those who are interested in getting that type of training. Those who want to, um, who haven't really completed or didn't get all the CXC certificates, there is a, a program that has been known as the Educational Enhancement Program. Again, it's a program that young people could uh, uh, enroll, in, enroll in that program. And there is an agreement also with the private sector that young people could be attached to a private uh, business in conjunction with the Ministry of Youth um, Empowerment. 
At the Anglican High School, students were concerned about job security for locals with the free movement of people within the OECS. Prime Minister Thomas explained what his administration is doing to protect its people. What is being done is that um, there are certain regional standards that have been set in terms of technical skills. So once you are competent and capable, you can move into any, any of the states. This is why we're trying to expose our people to technical training. They have the CVQs, as you call them, that is a original standard. They be it a plumber or a carpenter or someone in electronics, they do a, a certain test. And uh, so they could, once you pass that, meet that requirement, you could move into any state within the, uh, the OECS. Uh, generally, I think it's more, um, I guess, technical and professional people will be moving in and out of the states. We do not see any mass movements of the average um, citizen moving into Dominica or Dominican moving into Grenada. Basically, we see more professional and technical people. And once they meet the requirements, once they qualify, so this is why you have to um, you know, get yourself qualified and to be competitive. To understand the importance of science and technology, it is important to understand that it is associated with our lives and it is essential for the overall progress of society. The views expressed by coordinator of a three-day science and technology workshop, Mr. Martin Shaper. Mr. Shaper, a program specialist from Canada, says the workshop was aimed at establishing policies to help boost interest in science subjects. The objective of the workshop is to help countries in uh, establishing a surface of science, technology and innovation to, to collect data on science, technology and innovation. STI, which is the abbreviation of that, is uh, one of the main drivers of economic growth and can help in, in poverty reduction. So what is needed is that policymakers harness the benefits of STI by setting effective policies. Now to set effective policies we need evidence, we need facts to design the policies, to implement the policies, to monitor the policies and to evaluate these policies. And these data, they are often lacking in many countries and policies are not based on facts. And what we're trying to achieve is that countries collect the data that can help policymakers in set these policies. So what we're doing is we are uh, presenting the concepts and the definitions of research and development and of innovation and these concepts have been laid down in uh, manuals, the Frascati manual and the Oslo manual, and we are passing on the information to the participants here. Minister for Education, Senator Franca Bernadine says there is a downward trend in the interest of science subjects in schools and that impacts on performance. We understand that there is a, there is a significant trend on the pattern for the science teachers follows the same trend same trend. They're getting fewer and fewer and fewer. And um, it, it tells us an alarming trend that we're experiencing in the Caribbean. And uh, the need to, to turn around that trend, and it is through efforts of this nature, um, bringing to focus the importance of the statistics. Um, policy makers speak, or statistics speak to policy makers. Now we're particularly um, short of, of not only statistics specific ones that you are providing us with here, but there's a lack of interest, unfortunately, and it's because we're not up in the face of people in a very positive and active way. I'm certainly aware of the attempts to keep up with our regional exhibitions in science and technology, and here in Grenada, we have persons from our very ministry who struggle to do that each year, but it's like a voice in the wilderness. The workshop was held at the Alamanda Hotel. It targeted participants from across the region, some of whom spoke of the benefits. It has benefited quite a, a bit because um, previously we got this question is every year and um, we would not show us to how to fill them out, or what information to, to put in, 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 in the question is. But now being here, it has um, given me the... the I have gained the knowledge to, to be able to fill out the questionnaires and to know what information should I, 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 that I, I need to get to put in, in this questionnaires. And I think this, this workshop is timely. And um, though we do not have a, a science and technology 
Kong se back home. It's my intention now to go back and see what can be done to at least get a group going. Curaçao has just become its own country. The Netherlands Antilles um, are now dissolved and um, it's very important for us to you know to stand on our own ground and to develop new things so this workshop is very important for us as a university but also for the country because we need to have these uh, insight in research and development on our country in order to know where we should develop further. We learn quite a lot from this workshop um, in implementing research and development techniques I think we've come and we've learned about statistics and how to develop a proper survey to get the information that we require to move our country forward. Minister for Youth Empowerment and Sports Patrick Simmons wants people to reflect on the true meaning of independence. He spoke with the Government Information Service while awaiting his flight to Toronto, Canada to join the independence celebrations there. Minister Simmons said as a nation we must come together to develop creative ways to support ourselves, especially in these times where food security is an issue. If you look at the, the definition of the word itself, what it really means and what is happening, there is no, um, the disparity is too great. Because notwithstanding that we are supposed to be an independent nation, but the, the way that things are organized and the way things are structured, we see that we are very dependent. Dependent not only on our um, former colonizers, but also the new colonizers that came. So the whole issue of independence is, is one that I think we very definitely would need to relook or revisit and to see how we can become more self-sufficient um, in a number of areas, especially with food security. You cannot be an independent nation and still having to depend on um, so much a vast amount of inputs and so forth to satisfy the needs of your people. I think if you're independent, you should be, you should be able to... Um, to be self-sufficient in a number of areas. I also think too that we need to look at independence, not only in the prospect of, um, of Grenada, but more of an OECS CARICOM you know, initiative. And probably if we can, if we can bind in in that, um, in that extended um, version, then probably we can be much better off. Minister Simmons will represent the Grenada government at all the events organized by locals living in Canada. Activities begin on Friday, February 4, and will continue on to the 12th. There are two events that um, I would have to um, address the, the, the audience. But um, I also think that the, I would have the opportunity to, to read the Prime Minister's um, um, independence address to the nation. Patriotism from people in Piti Martini, where they staged their independence celebrations on Thursday. Details from Trevor Thwaites. The students at Chakra Vietad in their national colors, along with a contingent of the Royal Grenadier's Force, Marched for about 250 meters from the school down the main street to the driving sounds of the police band. The ads rides taken by the Governor General on the way back was moving as the contingent showed their allegiance to their country. Governor General His Excellency Sir Carla Glean, MP for the area, the Honorable Edwin Nimrod, Minister for Karakou and Piti Mahnik Affairs, George Prime, and the former Senator Michael Caesar, who presented the Prime Minister's message all reflected on the theme, celebrating 37 years of independence through challenging times with optimism and resilience. So Daniel encouraged the people of Piti Mahatnik and the country in general to focus more on reshaping the education system to provide more skilled programs and training for nationals to become more productive. He said that a new work culture must be cultivated if the country is to become truly independent, noting that this, the creativity of all is crucial. His sentiments were echoed by former Senator Michael Caesar, who delivered the Prime Minister's message. He said that the growth and maturity must form the hallmark of Grenada's development, noting that the theme indicates that the country is well on its way to becoming truly independent. He encourages all to work together to make this a reality. MP for the area the Honorable Edwin Nimrod said that there is need to acknowledge the work of the founding fathers who made the way and pay tribute to the father of independence, the former Prime Minister, Sir Eric Matthew Gary. He said that much has been accomplished over 37 years and there is much more to be gained once there is renewed strength and togetherness. We can take that approach to build a stronger nation. Cultural activities, including the singing of several national songs, Grenada, May God Bless You, Fear Al, 
and somewhere in the blue Caribbean Sea lies a tiny, lovely island uh, punctuated the celebrations. I am Trevor Faith in Pity Martinique reporting for the GIS News Hour. The European Parliament on Thursday approved a deal to reduce import tariffs on Latin American bananas. Lawmakers in Brussels voted 501 in favor to 114 against to give the green light to a December 2009 deal that was brokered by the World Trade Organization. The move is seen as one intended to end a decades-long banana war between the EU and the Americas. Caribbean producers who enjoy preferential market access in Europe have been speaking out against a deal they insist will further damage their banana industry. The new arrangement now means that customs duties on Latin bananas entering the EU will gradually fall from $240 US dollars to $114 US dollars by 2017. The EU has offered a $272 million US dollar package to Caribbean, African and Pacific banana growers as a cushion for their projected losses. People traveling from the UK to Caribbean and other destinations are being ripped off by airlines over the air passenger duty tax, the APD. That's according to a British travel watchdog. The Air Travel Advisory Bureau says it is taking up the cause of UK airline passengers who have not received refunds, running into millions of pounds on air passenger duty due to cancelled air tickets. The APD tax is only paid to the British government by the airline if the passenger actually flies. But if the passenger doesn't fly, that money should be refunded in full. According to the agency, some airlines make the process of getting a refund either difficult or so expensive in administration charges that they hope it will put people off from applying. A spokesman for the British government's Customs and Revenue Office said they had no way of knowing how much APD was being held back because airlines are not obliged to report how much income was gained from not refunding APD tax. Airlines report the withheld taxes as part of their general income. That's news. Sports is next. Hey man, hey man, um, you talking in your sleep, man? Uh, talking? Yeah. <laughs> boy, I was having one nice dream about the Grenada Sailing Festival Digital Walk Boat Regatta. Yeah, boy, and the time drawing here, you know. You know this year is February 5th and 6th, right here on Granite Beach? In in Independence Weekend? Yeah, man. All them team excited, and everybody say they're taking on the championship. You mean Guav, Woban, Sotez, the... the Pity Martin, yeah. Carol, all of them. <laughs> yeah, man, that weekend will be a weekend of food, music, and loads of excitement. So I could dress in the national colors then? <laughs> yeah. yeah man, and I will encourage everybody that at least we one part of the national color. Yeah no, man, I go back and sleep. I go not pick up my clothes for the digital walk boat we got that wire. Hey, don't forget, Grenada Sailing Festival, digital walk boat regatta, February 5th and 6th. Pure sales, pure spice. You stealing me dream, I just pass it. Composition. It drives us, fuels us, and, and makes, makes us champions. champions. Grenada, get ready for the sporting extravaganza of the decade. The American High School takes it on the fine style. Four houses battle for the title. Champion. Butchern House, Piggott House, Gowie House, and the defending champions, Walton House. Come out in your numbers. See and be there. Grenada National Stadium. 12 p.m. February 10th. The Anglican High School crowns a, a champion. champion. Morning fans, a very pleasant evening to you and it's all ready to go across the Caribbean. The start of the annual West Indies 4-day cricket tournament. The Windwards are in action tomorrow. They're going to be up against Combine Colleges. That fixture is going to be played in Bridgetown Barbados. 
Two Grenadians are in the Winwood's team, Neelan Pascal, the fast bowler, and Andre Fletcher, the wicketkeeper batsman. The Winwood's team has a new captain in the absence of Darren Sammy. Leon Sebastian, the Dominican, would lead the Winwood's team. Well, I have with me regional cricket commentator, Pastor Stephen Suwum. Winwood's, they have never won this tournament. They have a team capable of doing so in 2011? Not quite. Don't forget, you've got Devon Smith, who is off with the West Indies team, of course, in Sri Lanka. He will not be playing that game. And in addition to that, he's also on the World Cup team. So a very important person who has been scoring more runs for the Winwoods than any other player in the last uh, five or so years, uh, Smith, he's out. So the task becomes uh, a very difficult one. Of course, in addition to that, you have Darren Sammy, who is the West Indies captain and should be playing a pivotal role. He's also out. The good thing, though, is that you've got uh, um, Neilon Pascal, and he's going to spearhead the Winwoods attack. I think over the years, the Winwoods have had a, a pretty decent attack, and they could, in fact, be troubling Jamaica a bit. Right. Well, combined colleges, really and truly, they have promised much, but they have not been much better than the Winwoods. So really, the Winwoods has a weak start, I would say. A, a good start, perhaps. Well, good start, but don't forget the 2020 tournament, of course, which is a different uh, format from that of the four-day tournament. CCC did, in fact, play a couple of good matches in the 2020 tournament. Now, they're going to come onto the scene, and they would not feel that they're underdogs. They feel that they could probably play against some of the best teams in the region and be successful against them. So you can't really mark them out. So that should be even Stevens? may not be even Stevens. I think the, the Winwoods must have just nosed ahead a little. They beat them in the 2020. That's correct. Psychologically, that should be a good one. That is correct. Well, let's take a look at some of the names. Some of the names are new to us. Leon Sebastian, he has been there for a while. He's a captain. Lyndon James is a wicketkeeper. Yeah, Lyndon is going to be wicketkeeping. Of course, that is sort of controversial still because many people think that Andre Fletcher should be behind the stumps and would enhance his position maybe on getting recalled for, for, for the West Indies. But again, if he is picked as a specialist keeper, that's Lyndon James, I think that's where they're going to keep him. Right, and then we have Marvin Matthews, who I saw at Queen's Park smacked a couple balls here and there. I like him because he's a, a pretty decent all-rounder. I think he's a bit sharper than many people really um, believe. I won't be surprised if Matthew comes in and gets a few wickets for the Winwards. Right. Th this is a new name to me. Del Delron Johnson? Who is he? Delron Johnson is uh, a left arm seamer and he's pretty nippy. And uh, I, I think he's from St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Tall. The kind of player you think could probably turn out to be a decent fast bowler but obviously has a lot of work to do the coaches will have to work with him right and then we have uh, Theron Theophilo <laughs> am I saying it right yeah Theophilo he's going to be opening the innings he's going to be right up at the top um, I think he's got potential from St. Lucia but again he uh, like many other the Windows players and regional players they've got to learn to stay at the crease and bat too many of our regional players can only knock for half an hour, 45 minutes. They don't know what it is to go on to score 75 or 100 or maybe uh, stay at the crease for two hours, maybe three hours and batting. So that's going to be a big challenge for him too. And Don, Don Wells Hector, he has played well yeah, but Don as a well, youngster. Yeah, Don Wells has been up and down. Quite frankly, the sort of potential that Donwell has had over the years, he really should have been maybe, let's say, knocking on a West Indies door. When he came out several years ago, he had so much talent and everybody was talking about this Daniel Donwell Hector who was scoring a lot of runs. But commitment, and many of these players do not work hard enough. His work ethic has not been very good. Another cardinal um, sin he commits when batting, of course, is that he plays across the line too much. I mean, except you're, you're a good player like Sobib Richards and those greats of the past, you won't get away with it easy. Right, and um, well, he's been scoring runs in the 2020 cricket. He's a dashing batsman. Uh, that's John, uh, Johnson Charles. I, is he up to the three day in terms of concentration and mm, I would say building big partnerships? Well, don't forget he played for the West Indies A team and he, he also played here. He's a confident player. Sometimes I think a little bit too confident and maybe verging on the border of uh, cockiness sometimes. But he is the kind of player that West Indians would like to go and look at. He's fearless, uncompromising. He gives a dash at it. Again, though, he has to cope that natural aggressive instinct and would have to remember that this is not a 2020 game. This is a 4-day match and he's got to stay in the wicket and back much, much longer. Well, there are a couple of other players here we all know of. Neil and Pascal and Andre Fletcher, so we really don't need much introduction, except to see it's an opportunity for 
Fletcher to build upon? Well, an, an opportunity for Neil and Pascal to say that I'm one of the, the better fast bowlers in the region and he has to come good also and he's got a team, you know, CCC playing against tomorrow is a fine opportunity for him to come and, and make a tremendous mark. Well, I have seen Kiddy Les Porus bat in the 2020. I don't know if what I saw could represent his talent, but if what I saw in the 2020 represents his talent, I'm not too sure he's going to be, uh, to me, a player who can be depended on for lots of, lots of runs. I don't think really you could put him in a 2020 mold. I think that um, our um, fellow here, Lawrence, should have been playing in the 2020 squad. Uh, he should have played virtually all the games. I think Les Boris is the kind of player who might be more suited for the four-day championship, who will take his time, build an innings. He's got a pretty decent head on his shoulder. I don't think he's quite ready for 2020 cricket as yet. Good. Well, let's not go a uh, yes past. Uh, we're going to take Darren Ganga. He's out of the Trinidad Tobago team. Hasn't fully recovered from injury. Who's going to win this year? Trinidad and Tobago going to make it two. They have won the 20 overs. Are they capable of winning the 40? I think just about all the teams in the uh, tournament uh, are capable of winning the, the championship. Barbados will come into reckoning. Don't forget we've got a couple of senior players, experienced players in Jamaica. Uh, we've got Tamara Lambert who is there. Danza Hyatt I think is still there. Um, Wavell Hines is going to play a, a significant role. Jerome Taylor is not selected to play for the West Indies team. So obviously he's going to come back to say, look, I'm ready to reclaim my position. So Jamaica also has a, a pretty decent team. Tamir Lambert is leading Jamaica and not Devon and not Heinz. Um, that's kind of surprising. Uh, well, the, the thing is that Heinz, uh, I think they've given Heinz the run because they want him to establish, to put more of a stability there in the middle order. You know, I think they want to put some sort of senior seniority there. But Tamir Lambert's record has been very good, better that's than correct. Chris Gale's own, yeah. better than Heinz's own. And they're saying, look, we trust your leadership skill. You've got to be there and stay at the helm for Jamaica. So you're going to put your money on? You know, Ray, that I don't put my I money on. I know you don't put it, but you're going to put your mouth <laughs> where? I don't know. I, I, I tend to like Jamaica team Jamaica. a bit. Um, Barbados looks pretty okay. But again, the, the distance between all, among all the teams not very far at all. Well, I believe Jamaica has the best team. I believe Jamaica looks the team that could win the tournament. I certainly believe that, um, that um, this gentleman who is out of the West Indies team, I think he should have been in the West Indies team, Brendan Nash. I think he's certainly the best batter in the Caribbean. He seems to to apply himself, concentrate well. So I'm going to join you and pick in Jamaica. But I'm not going to put Trinidad very far apart. Very well. We don't disagree very much, do we? Spin <laughs> or peace going to do it? I don't know. I think over the years, uh, especially over the last decade mm. or so, it has been spin. And we will expect spin to play a dominant role in West Indies cricket for some time to come. Well, I hope we have a match next week here in Grenada. Mm -hmm. With Jamaica going to be here, so we're going to see Jimmy Adams. He's the manager of Jamaica team. Mm -hmm. Gus Logie is the coach of the Jamaica team. So we're going to see some of yesterday. Yeah, a bit of irony, though. Well, Gus Logie being the, the, the coach of, of Jamaica. Jamaica. Interesting. Well, it's one Caribbean. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> well, Pastor, we're going to talk much more about cricket in the Caribbean. Remember, it starts tomorrow. The Windwards will be in Bridgetown, Barbados, for their encounter against the combined colleges. The Leewards, they are also in action, as well as Jamaica, Guyana, and Trinidad and Tobago. So we'll keep you in touch with the scores from the respective games. Well, let's talk a little more cricket. Upal Toranga hit an unbeaten century to steer Sri Lanka to a comfortable eight-wicket win over the West Indies in the second one-day international that was played in Colombo. The West Indies, they batted first and crawled to 200 and Three all out in their 50 overs. Rain interrupted and the target was reduced to 197. It was easy going for Sri Lanka. It was less like eating a cake. And they scored 199 for two wickets. West Indies losing the second one the international. One more to play. Still talking cricket. Ahmed Shazad. First one day international. First one day century. Helped Pakistan to beat New Zealand and to take a 3-1 lead in the six-match series. Well, he scored 115 as the Pakistanis scored 268 for nine of their 50 overs. And in spite of a brisk knock of 6-9 from Ross Taylor, the acting New Zealand captain, they fell short by 41 runs, 227 all out in 45.5 overs. 
Pakistan they lead the series three games to one so they have won the series England all around that Paul Collingwood has been ruled out of the final one day international against Australia because of a back because of back spasm Luke Wright should replace Paul Collingwood and Luke Wright said he's excited about playing in that final one day international against Australia the Aussies, they have an unbeatable lead in the series. They are leading by five matches to one. Well, also joining the English team is Leon Punkett. He was in the Caribbean for the Caribbean 4 day tournament. But after 40 hours of flying, the young man says he's raring to go against the Aussies and look forward to playing. Let's talk about some local sports here now. The St. George's Sports Council is committed to changing the face of sports in the parish. That's according to the chairman of the St. George's Sports Council, Mr. Trevor Joseph. He says the council will work towards remedying key areas of problems in sports and strengthening the development of sports within the parish. We want St. George's to be one with a difference, whereby our sporting, sporting facilities in St. George's should be of world standard, world class. And the only way we can do that is if we work in collaboration as a sports council with the Ministry of Sports and the business places to develop our sporting facilities. Not too far from here, we know the Old Trafford playing field is a home ground where we see quite a number of our outstanding sportsmen and women launch their career in sports, the very Old Trafford playing field as well as the, the, the Tantino Rice and John Recreation Ground. And if we pass along Tanti now and we look at the Old Trafford playing field, we want to ask ourselves the question, if that was the Old Trafford we know. If we look at Tanti now, we ask ourselves the question, if that's the Tanti we know. How can we get it back? Collectively, as I said before, as a council, it is our vision to work along with the, our business places in St. George's, work with the sporting organization in St. George's, work along with the ministry and try to develop our sporting facilities in St. George's for outstanding sportsmen and women. Joseph, who insists there is an absence of support structures for young sports people, believes communities must once again be engaged for the system to change. We are hoping to change all of that and give them the support that they need. We need to go out into the communities. We are talking about the Vendom. We are talking about the Monjalu. We are talking about Marion. We are talking about Grand Mall, wherever. And identify our talents within those villages. Put structures in place in that we will have, one can remember the, the, the Dauntless or the, the Skylarkers from Belmont of old. We are looking to put those structures back in place so that the sports men and women that is upcoming in those villages will have a body they could walk along with, will be able to have somebody within the community that they could look at as a role model and able to mold them and bring them up to standard. Trevor Joseph, he's the chairman of the St. George's Parish Sports Council. Let's look on the volleyball court and see what's been happening there. Grenville Secondary School is the first team to advance to the final of the girls division of the 2011 inter-secondary schools volleyball tournament. Grenville Secondary, which played against, which played at St. Mark's Secondary School on Thursday, dominated their encounter. They won the, in, they won the fixture by three matches to nil. In the boys' division, St. Rose Modern Secondary School became the first team to advance to the final after defeating McDowell College three games to one. The second round games in the semi final will be played Friday, and the games will see in the girls' division the Grenada 70 Adventist Comprehensive will play St. David's Catholic Secondary School, and that game begins at 1 30 p.m. The match will be followed by the second semi final in the boys' competition. GBSS, Grenada Boys Secondary School, will be up against the Grenada 70 Adventists. The final of the 2010 Inter-Secondary Schools Volleyball Tournament will be played at the Library Indoor Court next Wednesday, February the 9th. That's a look at sports. Stay with us.
much more ahead. A burst of culture as Grenada's heritage hits center stage at the Cultural Fiesta. This Sunday, February 6th, at the Grenville Car Park in St. Andrew. Enjoy a wide variety of tasty Grenadian cuisine, arts and craft exhibition, and a spectacular concert featuring the Black Wizard, Man from the Mainland, 2010, Groovy Soka Monarch, Rankin Marvin, the traditional Shortney, the Maple Dance, and much more. The Cultural Village opens its gates from 5.30 p.m., followed by the Flambeau Parade through the town of Grenville at 7.30 p.m. and an impressive fireworks display at 12 midnight. The Independence Cultural Fiesta, February 6th from 5.30 p.m. at the Grenville Car Park. The grand climax of the Independence Celebration takes place on Monday, February 7th with the National Independence Day Celebration Pageant. Displaying Grenada's heritage and culture. From the Green Bridge into the National Stadium from 1.30 p.m. followed by the traditional military parade and rally at the National Stadium from 2.45 p.m. It's the grand finale of Grenada 37th Independence Anniversary February 7th at the National Stadium Come on out in your national colors and be a part of this celebration Come out in your numbers cause this one's gonna be big, big It's the National Independence Calypso Finals This Saturday, February 5th at the Ceteris Bus Terminal Lotel Ceteris 20 Calypsonians will attempt to dethrone the reigning independence Calypso monarch Anthony Darius Young Sundown, starting time 7pm And all this for free So get there early Guest appearance by the Calypso King Pico and Extempo Shout Out by Powder and Bernstein. It's the National Independence Calypso Finals this Saturday at the Satez Bus Terminal. This event will be backed by the Heatwave Band and part sponsored by the Marketing National and Important Board. Recapping the main points of the news, Grenada and the UK renew terms and conditions of air services agreement. Significant increase in all types of cancer recorded and Upper House passes passport amendment bill. That is the GIS News Hour. I'm Leslie Johnson. On behalf of all those who made it possible, we thank you for viewing.